What up my ninjas, I'm Strident, and I'm back with another toy review. Um, you guys know that I started, well restarted, collecting G.I. Joes with uh, Rise of Cobra. The movie was kind of meh, but the uh, figures, I loved them. They were really slick, I didn't have any issues with them, and uh, it kind of opened up all the possibilities for the rest of the Joeverse, all the way up to Pursuit of Cobra. I'm a fanatic about Pursuit of Cobra. But uh, we're going to talk more about the movie figures because I am reviewing a movie figure. Um, this was kind of the standard by which I judged a lot of the figures I would get afterwards. And uh, I would say most of the figures, you know, that came afterwards either surpassed or at least were close, you know. Um, which brings me to the movie. You guys heard my speculation on retaliation and my issues with retaliation. I felt that... Uh, Terry Crews should have been Roadblock. So did the designers that were, um, the concept artists that were coming up with the look for the characters, you know? I mean, and then after I saw um, Expendables and Expendables 2, I was like, I mean, it has to be him, you know what I mean? He just looked the part, he's funny, he's charismatic, and the dude's fucking huge. And, uh, I mean, it even inspired me so much as to find a uh, 1 18th scale uh, AA-12 for my uh, roadblock figure. And uh, so that's like the default weapon for roadblock in my Joe verse, you know? But now it brings me to this figure the G.I. Joe Retaliation Bata Ka Battle Kata Roadblock. God, I don't know why I fucked that up. But uh, it's actually not that bad of a figure. Let me rephrase that. It's an awesome figure, plain and simple. Um, I wanted so bad not to like it, and then I saw it and I was like, man, I gotta pick this up. People were posting pictures in the community. I kind of blame you guys, because you know how it is when everybody's flaunting something in front of you. You're like, eh, I gotta see what this is about. So, you know, I've been waiting for a new Joe to pick up, and, you know, they finally released him, and uh, I finally found a place that had him, so I kind of had no choice. You know how the hunt is. Um, and, you know, that's most of the joy of collecting, you know, it's a big part of it. But anyway, he was 10 bucks, which is beautiful. For 10 bucks, you got the figure and all of this. No stand, but, you know, whatever. But you got all this shit and you got a figure of Rock Block, as I like to call him. Rock Block, because I just can't call him Roadblock. I don't know. Rock Block. Um, you know, so you get Dwayne Johnson you know, as rock block or pretending to be roadblock. Um, I mean, that's decent. I mean, this is like Pursuit of Cobra level uh, accessory count and uh, the articulation and everything. It feels like a Pursuit of Cobra release, which is kind of nice, you know? It would be nice if all the movie figures followed this kind of, um, you know, uh, um, this blueprint or layout or design. You know what I mean? By design, I mean release. Um, you get your figure, you get all the gear, and your figure has this really good detailing. Um, there is a glaring issue, which I'm sure you all already see it, and I don't know why most of the reviewers don't say anything about it, and you know, I've read General Joe's, I've read uh, his tank reviews, and they don't say anything, but I'll get to it, it's pretty obvious, but you can see that so much of the details from the movie are present here, you know? I mean, this looks like roadblock or rock block from the film you know um and i love the fact that they did that one problem with this figure though um is he since he's so huge it would be hard for you to use him for a custom you know what i mean but you know that's not a, a huge issue but as you can see there is a shitload of detail just on the figure alone from every angle most of this uh these are new parts you know because i guess the rock represents a different type of uh, a different body type for the Joes so uh, you're getting a bigger figure he's like a head and shoulders taller than the majority of all the Joes so all his weaponry and his gear and his you know the sculpt had to match you know his size it had to be in proportion um, so yeah he's pretty big which is cool because you know we're getting a, a new sculpt for roadblock or rock block um, he has a lot of weapon storage and the weapon storage for the most part is awesome i always go crazy for weapon storage because i love when uh you collect 
uh, smaller figures and you can put everything they came with on their person. I always wanted a Batman that you could put all his shit in his utility belt and never got it. But uh, I used to collect uh, one six scale figures and usually, you know, every weapon that you, you, you want them to have, you can find a place to put it. You, you got holsters, you get bags, you get backpacks, you know, and most of that stuff works. Now, there were holsters on the sides. I chopped them off because they're fucking horrible. They're these huge fucking blocks of, 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 of storage that hold his big ass staple gun pistols and I don't really like them. So I chopped them off. I've seen a lot of uh, photographs of people doing it too. Um, but this is what it looked like. I think it's lame. And also you can notice when you look at this version of Rock Block, you can see what is different about this version, which would probably be the prototype, versus the actual release. Um, and I'm talking about that big white sheath. Also, he's got Narashikage tat. So for some of you, this might, you know, get help you get your jollies off because they made the rock roadblock as a ninja. For me, I'm still not happy about it. It still is a point of contention for me. I don't like it. But I'm going to just move on to the features of the figure. Um, these are the knuckles that go to his battle kata system. A weapon system, I guess. Um, pretty much these uh, brass knuckles, so to speak, uh, can lock into all of the other weapons on his person. You see that it, it, it can lock into the bottom half of the blade. Instant knife. Which is nice. You still got the knuckles and you got a knife. I think it's a cool idea. Um... And it, they're well detailed, too. I mean, those blades and the knuckles have so many little things on them. It's just like, man, it, it, it looks official, you know? Like I said, Pursuit of Cobra level detail. Um, and it'll be nice to see him flossing with these knives in the film, which, you know, I'm looking forward to. I mean, it's what? It's a month away? It's March? So um, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing that, you know? I'm not really happy about this whole ninja bullshit, but if it means we get to see The Rock go off then hey cool let me see it anyway you can have the knuckles lock into the bottom half of this uh piece on his back and you got a, a baton or billy club depending on your preference or an escrima stick instant escrima stick um so this is the gimmick for his whole uh his personal fighting style i guess you know this is his what he did with his arashikage training essentially so they're going to work this into the choreography in the movie here are the uh fist daggers now you can see it's kind of crooked and that's one of the issues i do have with this set one of them is straight and it it, it pegs in straight and uh the other one which is the one that you see here is kind of crooked um it's just weird um also you have the big old uh, industrial strength uh, staple guns, as one of my homeboys in the community calls them. Um, they're actually supposed to be his uh, twin pistols. Um, I kind of wish that they went a more uh, sculpted route. When I say sculpted, instead of doing two pieces and putting them together, sculpt freaking guns, you know what I mean? And have them slide on instead of having them peg on so they, they don't look so goofy I mean they look like nerf guns and you know that's one of the issues I have with these weapons and I noticed that most of the people that already had this figure when they pose him or they take their shots of him they took shots of him Sam's battle kata shit which is the gimmick of the figure which kind of sucks it's more like people got it because it's more of a it's one of the movie accurate uh, uh, rock block figures so it's kind of weird that, you know, they didn't do this. And you know how I, I pointed this out when I had the Dollar Gen when I did the Dollar General uh, Joe review, that, you know, some of the smaller Japanese figures, they do a better job of this, and we're paying close to the same amount. I think, you know, like I said, the SIC uh, Kiwami Tamashi were 11 bucks when they first came out. So that's a dollar more than this, you know. But, you know, for what it is, I won't complain. I won't complain. So in the film, he's supposed to be using um, gun kata. So you're going to see him doing all the fancy poses a la John Preston from Equilibrium. And it's kind of funny that we haven't really seen gun kata as, you know, on display as much since Equilibrium. So it'll be nice to see 
a person of color flossing with a style that you don't normally see. Granted, they had to make him a ninja to do it. They couldn't just say, this is a bad motherfucker and this is how he uses his weapons. Instead, they had to do that. But, you know, whatever. Finally, here is his trademark weapon, the Ma Deuce, the, brown, the M2 uh, Browning uh, 50 caliber machine gun. Now, this is, this is nice because they actually gave you a gun that is pretty much to scale. You know, like this is what it this is about the size that it would be on any of your vehicles. And it's got a peg, so you could peg it in on your vamps or uh, anything that had peg holes, I guess, you know. Um, so your Joes could actually, you could have it as an emplaced weapon on a vehicle, which is pretty nice, you know what I mean? Because before, they gave you a smaller version of it. But I mean, look at this thing. It's a monster. Now, I do wish they gave you the, the little uh, latch that he holds onto in the front. That kind of hangs down instead of that handle up there like that. But, you know, it still looks good. It doesn't look horrible. And I've seen various versions of it that had that. And then here he is standing next to his uh, 25th anniversary counterpart, which is my original one. My, my, uh, the first thing I notice is how tall he is. I'm like, damn, you know, he's like a head and shoulders taller. And then you look at the size of the gun and it's like, shit, that's really roadblock, you know? Um, if you want a more traditional approach, you could give him a smaller uh, uh, a saw and let him see how that looks. And that looks good, too. Um, it's just weird. And you see him side by side, man. As much as I love the original Roadblock and as much as I want a Terry Crews Roadblock, this figure puts that old one to shame. Um, here he is standing next to my boy Heavy Duty. Now, he does not put Heavy Duty to shame. <laughs> Of, of all the things in uh, Rise of Cobra, I loved Heavy Duty because they gave him personality. They made him a real character as opposed to a stand-in for Roadblock. But, you know, the two of them look cool together. And there he is with the saw. So you get more of a, of a you know, traditional kind of Roadblock, I guess. Or, you know, of one of the many versions of Roadblock. And it looks good, you know. They look really cool together. They look like they exist in the same universe. It kind of makes me hope that at some point... In, Excuse me, in one of the movies, they bring the two of them. They bring, you know, Heavy Duty back. And you find out maybe they're not dead, and they do them justice as opposed to just killing them off as if they're insignificant characters who do not count. Because, you know, it's not the character's fault, it's the writer's and the director's fault that the movie was kind of womp womp. But anyway, there's some badass looking figures, I gotta give them that. But the glaring problem is that fucking white sheath. I don't understand why they did that. I don't understand why all of the figures are like this. I don't understand why they want us to paint that ourselves when we paid them to have this. It's kind of stupid. Now here is a custom I made with the, uh, the uh, I think it was called the Dojo Showdown uh, three pack from Wave 1. I think that's what they called them. Um, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but it had Beachhead, Rock Block, and uh, Kamakura. I turned this into Solomon Blood, a custom Solomon Blood. It's one of Major Blood's illegitimate sons. <laughs> um, but anyway, what I wanted to show you guys, you know, besides, you know, having a little cool picture with the two of them standing off, I wanted to show you the scale. They didn't fuck up on the scale. Is there a, the, the bodies are exactly the same size. Shoulders are in the same place, and even without the feet, uh, the, the articulation in the feet and the ankles, he's still the same exact size. So it almost makes you wonder what was the point in cutting the articulation in the first place. But anyway, here is Rock Block with some of his fellow, these are you know characters I guess that you would see in Retaliation, but I'm not really buying the versions that go to this. I want Ultimate Flint and I want Ultimate Duke, but Lady J, I'm sticking with what I got. He looks cool with them. Um, but, uh, you know, like I said, the, the, the cons. The first con is, like I said, the big white sheath. That's stupid. Doesn't make sense. You should not have a white sheath. Like, why paint that white if the whole thing was molded in black? That's just dumb. Second con, Arashikage Tat. Roadblock is a army machine, heavy machine gunner. He's not a fucking ninja. If he's a badass at fighting, make him a badass at fighting. You don't need to do this. Um, 
I don't know, it's going with this new version of G.I. Joe, G.I. Joe they're trying to do. This the, the third thing is his tone, his skin tone. They should have darkened him up. It's kind of not so bad when you have him next to other characters. You see that he's actually a, a, a like a really dark tan in comparison to others, but, you know, whatever. Four, the fist daggers. They don't peg well in the, uh, the actual uh, uh, knuckles, and they don't fit well in the uh, vest, the holster or sheaths on the vest. They actually get lost behind the vest, and uh, some or they fall out. One always gets lost in the vest, the other one always falls out. Um, as you can see, this one is pegging in decently, but you know the other one doesn't. So all in all, those are my my cons. You know, you can kind of get over it when you start posing this guy and playing with him and giving him other weapons to hold. Um, it's kind of weird. He's like, you know, automatically just my default. Yeah, I'm gonna paint the white sheath, which I shouldn't have had to do, but I'm going to. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna start using this guy for my default uh, roadblock. So I guess I am going to call him Roadblock. I am going to try to paint his skin a little darker. Or I could just leave it and just continue with the idea that, you know, different Joes take on, different soldiers take on the code names of the various Joes. And this is our second Roadblock. The first one could have retired or something. You know what I mean? Like, I like the idea that it's a legacy thing and that, um, you know, it's not the same guy from Vietnam era to now. You know, several guys have, in some cases, several guys have, uh, you know, taken on the mantle of various Joes, you know. But either way, you end up with a big-ass Samoan dude who can uh, throw down alongside the likes of Snake Eyes and uh, hold his own and make, uh, you know, help bring the Joe team victory. I don't know about him being the leader of the Joe team and all, but he's still my, uh, one of my heavy machine gunners. And he's a badass. And you need that. All in all, this is definitely one of those figures that you probably should buy. Um, and if you can't find him, just wait. As we've seen uh, at the various toy fairs over the last two years, we've got an ultimate roadblock coming. He's browner, <laughs> or tanner. Um, he's more movie accurate. He's wearing a short sleeve shirt. The armor is all black. No ugly white sheath sitting in the in you know in the way. Um, he doesn't have the big ass holsters on the sides to make him look like a toy. And uh, it's almost as if Hasbro did this to make you rebuy the figure. They left that white sheath on there to piss you off enough to buy this in addition to it. But whatever, collectors will collect. You know how it is. But uh, anyway, that's been my review of uh, Battle Cotta Roadblock from G.I. Joe Retaliation. I think this is wave two. Um, I will be back reviewing a couple more. Uh, you know, retaliation figures, um, probably um, the Black Ninja and someone else. We'll see. But anyway, you guys have been great. Uh, be safe, and I will talk to you later. Peace outside.